Well, hi, and welcome back to my shop. And we're just about to try operating uh, the radio once again after I've changed out quite a few capacitors. Here's a lot of them here. So, um, in the meantime, I've taken the speaker out of the radio. Here it is here. I have a piece of cardboard to protect it on top. The speaker, by the way, looked to be in perfect shape. It looked really, really good. So I have the uh, proper speaker plugged into the back of the radio. And uh, I think we're pretty well ready to go here. Okay, everything looks good. Volume's down. Which is on. And we have uh, two bulbs in for restriction. That's not all that much. There we go. Getting my hand on the switch here. Okay, nothing bad seems to be happening. Let's see from the light bulb up here. That uh, yeah, that light bulb didn't just get brighter and duller. That was an effect of the camera. Um, the radio's drawing current just like it should. Let's turn it up. <laughs> Okay, let's tune around a little bit here. That he will release his lesson. Oh, all three candidates are on campaigning this weekend. The second thing, the more you just paid off faster. And right down here. Pretty good. Certainly proves it's still working. So I think that's the AM band. This would be the police band, which we won't bother with. We'll go up on the short wave band. And we're currently tuned around 5.5, 6 in that area, right near the 49 meter international broadcast band. Let's see what we can get here. We'll have to turn it up awfully high. Way high. A little bit of distortion somewhere, but it could be this cardboard on top of the speaker. Yeah, I think it's this cardboard. For sure. Ha <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, there's a little lesson about speakers here, isn't there? When you hit exactly the resonant frequency, whatever it is that might be resonating, in this case, this piece of cardboard that I put on the speaker here, uh, it really, really comes to life. So as I tune across some of the stations, there's a tone, a pitch that goes from high to low or something like that, or low to high. So it crosses the frequency spectrum, and it goes right across the... Uh, this is the classic uh, uh, opera singer breaking the glass kind of thing. Okay, let's, let's keep tuning here. Teletype. Oh, just that. I don't know if that's teletype. I mean, it could be almost anything. Teletype like signals. And sitting to heart to heart. You know, trauma. Is that resonance? In her voice. So that's why when you put a, 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 a speaker into a cabinet, you want to screw it down really good. Or else the speaker itself will shake like that. Something funny just happened. Seemed to be a bit of a pop there and then a, a sudden uh, drop off. Yeah, probably a loose tube or something. Hope it too. Okay, let's shut off the radio at this point. And uh, next thing we should do is take a look at why that tube might be a little noisy. It's probably just because the uh, tube pins are a little bit dirty. It ju just needs to be worked a little harder. I didn't really want to do it with the radio operating. Uh, we'll look underneath and see if there's some connection problem or something like that. That's not very likely. And uh, then we should take a few tests of uh, B plus and things like that. Um, the output tube probably has a cathode resistor. Let's see. No, it doesn't. It's coming from a. I'm gonna guess. I'm not sure. Not sure. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm have to study this a little bit, but there can be a way in the power supply to derive a bit of a negative voltage and then feed it up to the grid. So I'm pretty sure that's what's going on here. And after checking those things, the next step would be an alignment. Um, and we got to deal with this. Now let's think about this for a minute. There's supposed to be some kind of a focusing device or something that's going to focus the light onto this front. And it's going to be in the form of a line, but I think it's going to look like individual dots here because the, the grill here is masked in such a way that light can only appear just along that line there. It's pretty cool, actually. You know, I could probably show that. This is too broad a light also. So, something I think is definitely missing here. You know, I, 
Thanks for a comment from a viewer. And I'm sorry, I, I don't have it in front of me. I don't know. I can't remember who. But somebody said they have familiarity with this radio, and there should be basically a cover on the light, but I, maybe with a slot or a hole in it that project, projects the light into a thinner, thinner thing. So we got to kind of make something like that up to manufacture it. Now it looks to me like this glass is sitting right on top of this black metal piece, all one piece. So I take the glass off, I'm just, I'm just thinking about whether this would be helpful. If I take the glass off, do I get more access to anything? And I don't think so. I think I'll just see this black metal with the three little strips in it. Yeah, I might want to take it off for cleaning purposes, uh, but for access it isn't going to help one bit. No. So this is welded with the side pieces. Hmm. Wow, this is all one unit here. It's just it's not gonna I think I think there's two screws here. And if I take them off, this whole metal piece will come off, leaving behind moving light. No, I'll take that back. If I take those screws out, these lights will fall off. That's all that will happen there. Somehow. Now, wait a minute now, there's more to those lights. Closer look here. See if I can figure out how this is being done. I'm going to correct the focus here first. That, that screw, that just holds the glass on. Look down in here. So there's a screw there. Oops. There. And that's holding on the light. That's the light socket you're looking at right there. Now, is there anything else? Is that bracket continuing on? And that's what I want to try to find out. How, how's this internal light colored metal, how does it end up fixed to the dark metal? I'm hoping it's not. I can just take off this dark metal piece and voila. There's the light thing itself. Let me change the focus here. I'm getting a, I'm sure I get it a little better. Maybe a little better. A little too close there. So there's that light piece that moves when you tune it here. Yes, Tabby. My oldest cat is in here. Ask him for, ask him for something. What? What? 
Daddy, tell, tell them how your day's been going. He's uh, 15 years old now. You don't see too much of her in my shop. It's a little bossy, this one. He wants me to go and do something, but I don't know what it is. That's just about par for the course there, isn't it? <laughs> okay, Tappy. Get back to work now. What was I doing? <laughs> oh, a little distraction. Never hurt anybody. So maybe if I look up from underneath here, I can see something. Hmm. Yep, one being. <laughs> Come on, Tabby. Please, don't give me the look. She's just clawing the back of my leg, so I'm going to have to go and deal with her. So, I'm going to leave the radio just as it is for now, and uh, say thanks a lot for watching. And uh, the next video will be, uh, I think I'll be checking the voltages and just looking for any kind of, uh, anything that's not quite right. Uh, there could still be some resistors that are out of whack, and, and something could be a little out of... You know, too far out of range that could be uh, put right. We'll just check some of that. And then it's alignment time. And uh, in the meantime, somehow I'll figure out how to, how to deal with this light. See you in the next video.